What's up everybody and welcome along to a new episode of, a new tutorial even, from Simulation for the Nation. We are going to be delving into cosplay today for FS19. Recently, in the last current kind of, well, time to record at least, in the last few days, it has been released. There's been a few updates to it already. And I've seen a lot of questions around various different forums about how to, uh, how to install and how to operate uh, cosplay. So what we're going to be doing over the course of probably about five or six different episodes, we're going to look into the severity and the... Uh, uh, and a little bit more complexity with each episode, the operation and the installation of Coursefly. So, but before we can do any of that, the first thing we of course need to look into is actually downloading the application itself. So to do that, uh, find yourself a search engine. In this case, we have gone to Google. And we're gonna type in GitHub into the search bar. And then it's gonna clear this, this little option here. It's the first one we're gonna click on. Now from this stage here, if we click on any of these, it will take us to the area we need to be in. So let's click on beta use, for example, here. Uh, and it loads up there. What you're actually gonna do, along the top here, you have code, issues, pull requests, projects, a wiki, and insights. So you wanna click on code. Uh, in code here, these are all of the threads for cosplay, but we don't particularly need to look into those. We need to look focus our attention over here. Uh, this is clone or download. We wanna click onto this. It allows us to download the zip file that we're gonna need to install into the mod folder. Uh, so we click on download zip and as you'll see in the bottom corner here Cosplay is downloading which is fantastic so you can get away and close the Google page that you have open there at this stage what you want to do is jump into your download folder on your computer where you'll see you'll have Cosplay dash master now what we need is to do is get rid of this one we need to actually extract this first of all uh, so you're going to right click hit extract and then go OK the reason we're going to do that is because when you download from the GitHub, you have the course play file inside the course play path. Um, so if you just uh, cut and paste the original download file into your mod folder, it won't recognize it. Um, a second thing we need to do, we need to remove this dash on the, the folder name. So we just go into rename and just remove that like so. Once you've done this, you can uh, drag that across into your mod folder. Uh, which is m typically in documents, my games, uh, farming simulator 2019, mods, and then in there we're just going to paste that in. Uh, you can close this down and then we can go and open up the game. So, we're going to start a new game here, just have a look. Let's just go new farmer and raven port. In here you'll see some of the mods that I have downloaded already, but what we're going to do is we're going to do select one of those. Uh, and what we're going to find is just course play. And it's quite easy to find, it's always had a very um, a very unique icon in across all platforms. As you scroll down, there you go. You can see it's Cosplay Six. That is the one we want. It has to be Cosplay Six. If you follow the steps that I took there, and from the link I'll put in the description, you can't go wrong. Uh, we're gonna click that one, <coughs> and we're gonna load up. So as soon as this loads up, we'll come back to you. We'll have a bit of a, a demonstration as to how to get to use it, the very basics. We have jumped straight into a machine here, the game has loaded in. One of the first things it brings up is actually two messages, two questions for you. The first one is, Cosplay, do you want the fields to be scanned automatically? You want to click yes for that one. Uh, the reason for that is because when the game loads up there, it will scan all the fields, the field sizes. So when you come to create your Cosplay courses, it makes the whole world easier. Second one is, do you want your workers to earn 1,500 euros an hour or whatever currency you're using in game? This one is entirely up to you. If you hit yes, then it's gonna cost you an awful lot of money for the most basic of tasks. Um, if you hit no, then it won't cost you that much money uh, and you'll still be able to reap all the benefits from course play. We're gonna hit no for now. Uh, we're not actually gonna, we're gonna jump ourselves out of here. Uh, let's just go into, we're gonna just cut this so it's nice and low. So you're in your tractor here uh, and you wanna start, you wanna, let's say you wanna create a, a basic to and from which is nice and easy there. What you need to do though before you can do all that is actually toggle open your course play. Now uh, default co uh, controls for this are right click and it brings up this control hub in front of you. Now uh, with this you have a variety of different options and settings. We're not gonna look into too many of those right now. We're already set on the one that's important. Uh, so if we, let's just connect that so we can actually see. Along the bottom here, you have grain transport, uh, load and start, uh, combi, empty combine and offload. Uh, that one we can't do because there's not a chaser bin. Uh, that, so that would be like an unloading course play. So it just unloads from the, um, 
from the combine to a to a lorry or a chaser bin wherever it may be. This one is for fertilizer and seeding, and this is the one we're going to start with, which is just a no horse loaded. This is very simple uh, to do. What we need to do before we can do anything else is record a course. We have start recording here, and quite simply, you can hit start recording, and what you'll find is immediately we have an icon above our head, uh, and this is the track that we're going to be recording and driving along. So we're going to just take this little here. As you see, the more we drive, the more little icons we start to get above our head. As we speed up there, they start to space themselves out a little bit. Uh, and what we're going to do is just do a little bit of a loop around the farm here. Now, there's a couple of secrets with this. If you want this just to be a start at point A and finish at point B, and that's it, then you can hit uh, pause or stop, to s or you'll hit stop to stop the recording there. However, my advice to you would be that you use this, which is a P for park, and that adds a weight in there, a weight point. With that weight point, it means that the tractor will stay there for either the, an allotted period of time that you uh, prescribe, usually in integers of uh, it's seconds, so you can do anything from zero seconds up to uh, several minutes if you want, um, or it will stay there until you physically come in and tell this to drive on. Uh, so you can put a point in there, and after that you keep moving. Now, if you want this to be a point A to point B, but in a kind of a loop, the best thing you can do is pull up behind uh, the start points like this, uh, and then you will press stop. The reason we're going to pull up a little bit behind is so that when it stops, the course play will automatically try to return to point A, uh, which in this case is this arrow here. So if you leave it behind and kind of in a straight line there, the, it makes it a lot easier for the tractor and the computer to do that. Uh, rather than trying to turn in a circle and probably crash into this gear gradient. Uh, so when you're done, uh, if we hit, we're going to move forward a little bit, we're going to hit uh, drive course. And we're going to watch uh, as course play picks up our course and then starts to follow it exactly as we drove it. Uh, it will factor in speed that you drove as well, uh, and it will factor in um, whether you're on a field or on a main road, like if you go to a main road and your tractor has beacons, for example, it will uh, enable beacons. Uh, so that's always very nice. Uh, and we're going to let it do its thing. So as we watch it come back around this corner, uh, we'll see that it should come to the waypoint where it'll stop. And it'll ask you here, it'll A, give us an awarding, uh, saying that it's reached its uh, waypoint, and B, ask us to proceed. As you can see, we have the one there, uh, 13DT, which is the machine, has reached a waypoint. Uh, at this stage, you can hit continue, and it continues. If it is set to an allocated timer, it will get to the end of the uh, time, and then it will continue itself. And it, as you can see, the way I have this set up there, it has reached the stop. As it reaches the stop, the end point, it will move on back to the start. So this will keep going in circles for as long as we need it to. There are more in-depth features that we'll go into in, the ba in terms of deactivating that to make sure it stops. For example, stop at last point on next trigger, it's deactivated right now. Let's click for activated. It's going to stop here at our wait trigger. Uh, as you can see down here as well, we have covers or are currently automatic. That's for grain trailers. When your grain trailer is full, for example, it will automatically enable the covers. Um, we don't have any covers on this set on this particular setup though, so it hasn't. And continue. And it has reached the end, so the machine stops there. So that's what nice and simple, basic uh, first kind of route planning and recording for course play. We're going to go into a lot more detail as we uh, progress over the course of the week with uh, tasks such as recording field work. Uh, and we might even get on to loader work and leading from combines and using various machines whilst harvesting. So uh, that's all to come. But for now, this has been the very, very basic initial start. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this and you find these useful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Simulation for the Nation. And we will see you in the next one.